I think it's fantastic. The uh, booths are just set up so well. Um, everybody is friendly. It's very informative, and I think it's great. It's a great chance for me to be prepared for the decision of high school so I can go in ready and know what my options are. Let's give parents an opportunity not just to see what our school district has to offer in terms of magnet school, but to see what our community neighborhood schools have to offer as well. It's one of the most highly anticipated events of the school year, and this year it drew a record-breaking crowd of 15,000 people. We're talking about the 2014 School Choice Expo, formerly known as Magnet Mania. Thanks for watching this episode of Real School. I'm Adriana Sorensen. And I'm Patrick Wright. In moments, we'll take you inside of the Prime Osborne Convention Center for highlights of the big event. But first, here's what we're working on for the next half hour. He's furry, fun, and friendly. We're introducing you to DJ, the top dog in Duval County Public Schools. Learn more about his role in the district's new branding campaign. Plus, it's a surprise of a lifetime, and our cameras are rolling for the big reveal. The big gift I have for you is... You'll want to watch as leaders present this Ed White student with an amazing gift. And I'm Jesse Rhodes. Duval students are earning diplomas in record numbers. Check out my report on graduation rates coming up. Thanks, Jesse. It's that time again. Time to get to our top story. This year's School Choice Expo was bigger and better than ever. It served as a one-stop shop for students and parents to learn more about all of our schools. Real School reporter Jada Sevilla is joining us with more on what made this year's School Choice Expo the best yet. Hey guys, you couldn't find this much excitement anywhere else in the county. This was the perfect combination of education and just plain fun. The doors are opening, please feed in your food. Look at him go. From the moment the 2014 School Choice Expo began, the crowds just kept coming. They were introduced to a wide variety of programs available in schools, from marine biology to aviation and so much more. Check out this in-flight simulator. Basically, I'm just flying an aircraft, uh, making sure it's level and it's keeping a steady altitude without climbing up too much, without stalling. The students actually constructed this. So it shows that, you know, they, they're actually doing hands-on work. The School Choice Expo was the perfect opportunity for schools to pull out all the stops and show off their programs, initiatives, and offerings to the community. For Julia Landon, College Prep, it's a great opportunity to meet and greet parents and students interested in the school. For some, this is just an affirmation of what they already believe they know, and for others, it's, it's a first step. And I think it's a great opportunity to get their feet wet. It's a great opportunity for families that really don't know too much about the choice system in Duval County um, to, to get some first information and go from there. This year, the Expo featured every school in the district, not just schools with magnet or choice programs. Principals new to the event say this gave them a chance to market their school in a new, unique way. We're a hidden gem on the north side, Sheffield is, so this is a good experience for people to know that we're out there and what we have for children. You know, every student doesn't fit into a magnet mold, and so these other schools provide wonderful opportunities for our kids to flourish. This year's Expo theme was My School, My Story, My Way. This allowed each school to showcase an individual student and his or her story. Meet Abigail Gower of Windy Hill Elementary School. We're all leaders there, we don't bully each other, and we're all kind to each other. And if you wanted to see the talent of the students in the schools. Sign me up. Sign me up for the SAT and ACT. All you had to do was step outside. School groups and students from all over the district took the stage for a full day of fantastic performances. At the end of the day, students and parents were thrilled to gain so much information in one convenient location. I think that it's really cool and everything because all the schools are welcoming you and they're all well, they're warm and everything and it makes you feel like you really belong there. It just it gives you all the different options and the different locations so you're able to get more of a face-to-face -face interaction with them. Wow, what a showcase. Remember, this happens every year in January, so if you missed it, be here next year. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Jada. If you were among the crowds who came to the expo, you couldn't help but notice a very special and very furry guest. Here's a hint. He's furry and doggone cute. Meet DJ, the newest member of the Duval County Public Schools family. DJ is our new mascot, and DJ is short for Duval Jacksonville. DJ spent plenty of time meeting families, greeting educators, and giving out plenty of hugs. By the way, this dog really digs education. 
The 13-year-old Pooch likes to learn new tricks, and he says his favorite subjects are reading and recess. DJ is just one piece of a new district branding campaign. Just one day before the expo, district leaders gathered at the Prime Osborne Convention Center to unveil a brand new logo. Dr. Nikolai Vitti says the new logo is one piece of an ongoing marketing campaign, which aims to publicize district's offerings. A local firm created the district logo using feedback and market research from students, parents, and the community. They donated more than 170 hours to the design. The bridge um, was selected not only because of its connection to Jacksonville, um, but when you think about what we do in, in public education, we build bridges. By the way, this new campaign comes in conjunction with the district's 150th birthday. The report card for Duval County High Schools is in, and the news is good. We've passed with flying colors. The district earned high marks in several areas, including a record number of A schools. Real school anchor Jacob Pigney is here with more on how our high schools are making the grade. Jacob? Hi, guys. Never has the district seen a higher percentage of high schools with A grades than now. Great news indeed. That's just one of many success stories. What a year it's been for Robert E. Lee High School. <laughs> Students at the oldest, newest high school not only saw the completion of a multi-million dollar renovation, they've also received some incredible news. This is an A school for the first time in the school's history. Now what we've always known is that Lee not only looks like an A school, they are an A school. Former Lee principal Dr. Denise Hall stood alongside Dr. Nikolai Vitti at a news conference held at Fletcher High School. Dr. Hall is one of several principals celebrating notable achievements. Duval County Public Schools um, can now say that we have the highest number of, of A high schools that we've ever had before and the, the greatest, the highest percentage of A high schools in our district um, at any other time. Wow, that's incredible. Right now, close to half of all our high schools are A schools. Even though First Coast is listed with a B grade, Dr. Vitti believes the district will be able to successfully appeal the grade, resulting in the school's first A. Another school earning an A for the first time, Atlantic Coast. Fletcher High School also has a reason to celebrate. Besides being an A school, students gain more than any other high school in the district. Close to 70% of all Duval County high schools are an A or B school. This represents the highest combination of A and B high schools in district history. It takes great leadership to turn around a school district, and I think that's what you, what you see happening today. And we expect no less for our students. Everything's not perfect. We know it. We have a lot of work still to be done. But the work that has been done is on the shoulders of the students, the parents, the faculty, and the administration. Just reflecting over all the hard work that everyone did. I mean, this doesn't happen just by one person, obviously, but not just in one year. I have incredible students, I had incredible teachers, a great administrative staff, people who are dedicated to the kids we serve. Guys, I got to take a moment to brag on my school, Wolfson High. This past year, we went from a C to a B. I know I'm proud of my school, and I know that progress is being made in so many other schools. Joining us now to discuss school grades is Dr. Nikolai Vitti. Thank you. Dr. Vitti, first of all, wow. We know these types of successes don't happen overnight. Tell us, what does this report card really mean to you? Well, I think it means that um, all of our schools are heading in the right direction. The culminating point of student achievement happens at the high school level. So all the work that elementaries do and middle schools do comes to a point at the high school level. And not only am I excited about the fact that we have the highest number of A schools in the district's history, but I'm also excited with the fact that those A schools mean something as far as college ready. We talk about our high schools being a place where kids are prepared for college uh, life and a career, um, but uh, specifically our high schools are leading more kids to be college ready. And so not only are our high school grades the highest, but our college readiness rates are the highest, especially in reading and math. So that means more kids are able to go to college and avoid taking a remediation class at the, at the reading and math level so they can get into their area of interest faster. Um, so not only are we doing better as far as high school grades, but very specifically, we are turning out kids that are more college ready. A lot of people out in the community will be skeptical and say, well, how can this school be an A and that school be an A? Um, and is it because standards are lowered? And actually, our standards have been high, it's been raised, 
and to get a high school diploma is much harder than it was three years ago, nevertheless 10 or 20 years ago. So the, the standards are higher and our kids are meeting those expectations at the individual student level but even at the school level. Okay. Parents use school grades to determine a school's quality. Does it really tell the whole story? Well, you know, even what I was saying, I, I think it, it's telling us that our high schools are doing much better than they were before, uh, that our kids are more college ready. We have more kids graduating on time. Um, again, not only our college readiness and, and, and school grades at the highest it ever been, but our uh, numbers regarding graduation are the highest that they've ever been. So every indicator at the high school level, whether it's graduation, college readiness, or even it, um, uh, participation in acceleration programs like advanced placement, industry certification, um, and uh, due enrollment, uh, they're all trending upward. So that means that in, in multiple areas, our kids are doing better and more um, and, our, and our high school grades reflect that. So to answer your question directly, I think it means that um, we're, we're doing much better um, at every grade level, especially at the high school in preparing our kids for college uh, life or a career. Okay, so while there's a lot to celebrate, there's always room to grow. Moving forward, how can our schools build on this momentum to improve? Well, I'm, I'm not going to be satisfied as superintendent until all of our schools are A's. So although we had more school, schools that were A ever before, all of our schools are an A. And I think every uh, high school student, every member of the community deserves their local high school to be an A school. So I think the work um, still has to be with moving all of our schools to being A's and then making sure that even more of our high school um, uh, students are graduating from high school in four years. We're moving in that direction, but certainly more progress can be made. So I'm not going to rest until all of our schools are A and all of our kids are graduating in four years, and obviously we have work to do in both of those areas. Okay. Thanks so much for joining us, Dr. Vitti. Thank you. For a complete listing of school grades, please visit DuvalSchools.org. Back to you guys. Thanks, Jacob. Here's what's next on Real School. It's a new partnership linking Duval students to the local workforce. Find out how the Jacksonville Chamber of Commerce is joining forces with several of our career academies. And I'm Brianna Tewitcha. I've got a story about students who are muy impresionante, or very impressive. Be sure to stick around and meet them. Real School will be right back. I remember walking the halls of New Stanton School, getting a great education, and playing football Earning my diploma is one of my proudest moments. It was the key to my success. In every classroom, every day, I learned with hard work, I can do anything. I'm the former sheriff of Jacksonville and current president of my alma mater, Edward Waters College. I'm Nat Glover, a proud graduate of Duval Schools. Better job opportunities and a head start in college. These are just two benefits of being bilingual, according to the Center for Applied Linguistics. Thanks to a growing dual language program, many of our students are well on their way to success. Real School reporter Brianna Tewicha is here with the story. Hi, Brianna. Hey, guys. Students are doing more than just taking a foreign language class. They're spending weeks totally immersed in a different language. This is the sound of students and teachers communicating in another language. Whether these students are working with addition or subtraction, multiplication or division, they're only speaking to each other in one language, Spanish. One of the goals of dual language is to create um, bilingualism with our students and our students are learning um, all their subjects, reading, writing, math, science and social studies in English and in Spanish. Um, those students who speak Spanish are now being exposed to the English language, but at the same time they're still learning um, in their home language. This is the dual language program at San Jose Elementary School, where about 190 students are enrolled. Here's how it works. Students spend one week learning all of their subjects in English. The following week, they learn all of their subjects in Spanish. I think they get to really practice it, the oral part of the language. I think that's what's lost within just a foreign language classroom. You get to learn how to write it, you may get to learn how to read it, but you really don't get to speak it. And you don't really get to speak it in a natural way. This is real world conversations. These particular students are in the fourth and fifth grade, but what's even more impressive is that many of them began this program as kindergartners. 
Students say they not only enjoy the immediate benefits of learning. I like being in this program because I speak English and Spanish, and sometimes I try to show my mom um, English words so she can learn English. They're also aware of the success it will bring in the future. Here's why fourth grade student Emily Salinas says dual language is important. When they get um, older, they have a better opportunity for a better job. Teacher Nicole Rodriguez says these students have another big advantage, their age. A lot of these students began in kindergarten and they're really very open to learning new languages. They're not um, inhibited. They like to talk to each other and they like to communicate each other. And if anybody makes a mistake in any language, um, the other students are very supportive of those students and they help them and they help guide them to what they need to do. Right now, San Jose is one of three elementary schools in the district with a dual language program. They've done a really great job teaching us. District leaders plan to expand the program next year to include DuPont Middle School. I think it's interesting the way they do switch between two languages. I don't think they realize that they're switching. I did have one child the other day who's like, I started writing in English and then I finished in Spanish without even realizing it. And I said, congratulations, you're bilingual. And she was just like amazed with herself that she did that and she didn't even know. And I think that's the most interesting part. How interesting. Buen trabajo. That's Spanish for good job. Back to you guys. Thanks, Brianna. It's official. Duval County High School students are graduating in record numbers. Last school year, the district saw more students than ever earn high school diplomas. Real School reporter Jesse Rhodes joins us with the exciting news. Jesse? Hey guys, it looks like the hard work has really paid off. Not only are more students graduating, but they're also making history. Here at Duval County Public Schools, we love high school graduations. We share in each graduate's pride as they wear their cap and gown and walk across that stage to a great future. Now we're seeing an impressive trend. We have reached an all-time high as a school district when it comes to graduation rate, at-risk graduation rate, and college readiness. That's good news for our students and our community. So here's the breakdown. As standards become tougher and courses are more rigorous, Duval students are meeting expectations. More than 72% of our students are graduating from high school. That's a 4.4 percentage point increase over last year. It's also one of the highest rate increases in the state. 18 out of 21 high schools either increased their graduation rate or maintained it at 98%. Superintendent Reedy invited several of those principals to share in an announcement about the good news. Robert E. Lee, Ed White, and Frank H. Peterson all saw improvements in the double digits. And get this, for the second year in a row, Paxson School for Advanced Studies has a 100% graduation rate. Board member, Dr. Constance Hall, was quick to thank principals. I've walked in their shoes. I know the challenges that you face each and every day. And there are just no words that, that can describe the work that you do, the hard work that you do, the sacrifices that you make to accomplish your jobs each and every day to support your teachers in doing what's best for students. Duval graduates are also at an all-time high when it comes to skills demonstrating college readiness. 80% of Duval students are college ready in reading, and 60% are college ready in math. Finally, the district continues to see improvements in two key areas, with at-risk students and also closing the achievement gap. And today I am just extremely proud of the fact that our at-risk students, many of the students who are enrolled in students in, uh, in schools in District 4 that I represent, that we see a forward definite movement toward closing the achievement gap when we look at graduation rates. But it is the students' work that ultimately that, that ultimately brings the success that we have seen today. It is their showing up, um, their dedication, and their commitment to their own education that we support as adults on a daily basis. Way to go, Duval. Students and teachers are working hard. Back to you guys at the studio. Thanks, Jesse. We're entering the final stretch of Real School. Here's what's ahead. It's a touching surprise you won't want to miss. Watch as this Ed White student is honored before his peers and learn why many are calling him an inspiration. 
and I'm Jacob Pinkney. Find out how high school students like me are being connected to the workplace. We're sitting down with Dr. Beattie for the details. So keep it here. Real School will be right back. Success doesn't happen overnight. You think we were handed a trophy? We earned it. Nine times. Nine times. You want it bad enough? Go get it. Go get it. Undefeated state champions. Being a champ takes hard work. It begins with educational excellence for every one of us. Every one of us. On the court, in the classroom, year round. All day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Keep your head in the game. A partnership between Duval County Public Schools and the Jacks Chamber promises to bring new learning and leadership opportunities to our students and the community. The district and chamber are pairing local businesses with career academies, giving students valuable experiences. The partnership focuses on career academies in six high schools, Ed White, First Coast, John Ribault, Robert E. Lee, Mandarin, and William M. Raines. Students will be exposed to mentoring, career readiness, and other employment opportunities. A really cool part of the program is the Mobile School Cafeteria Capstone Project, where students from the school will run, plan, manage, and operate a food truck business. Yes, a food truck. Jack's Chamber President and CEO Daniel Davis says working with the district is key to the success of our local economy. I think that it's very important for us to stand shoulder uh, to shoulder with the educational programs because that is economic development. If we don't have a skilled workforce, we cannot create economic development. Dr. Nikolai Vitti is in the studio to talk more about our career academies. He's joined by Rural School anchor Jacob Pigney. Hey, Jacob. Hey, guys, and what an interesting program. <laughs> Dr. Vitti, under your leadership, career academies have expanded in Duval schools. Tell me about career academies and the value in such programs. Well, if you go back to our mission, um, we or our vision, it is to inspire students and prepare students for um, a career um, college um, and life. And I think we certainly are preparing more of our kids for college and that's so, sh shown in our college readiness scores. But I think we can do a, a better job of preparing our kids for a career and life in general. And I think that happens in a career academy where kids will learn um, what they're being exposed to outside of a book, uh, more through hands-on projects, more through internships. And so the career academies is a way to make learning come alive and be more relevant for students. Uh, research is clear anecdotally, I know in my experience, that when kids um, are experienced and seeing what they're learning, they're more likely to remember it, absorb it, get excited about it. And even if uh, certain students aren't going to have a career linked to the career academy that they're in, the exposure in itself will create more well-rounded students and, and enable them to be more successful in whatever career pathway they decide or whatever college they go to. Okay. How else does the district promote career readiness to students? Well, in, in not only in expanding career academies, but expanding the partnerships uh, with private industries linked to those career academies, so students have more internship opportunities, more job shadowing opportunities. Uh, we're hoping to bring more um, individuals from industry to teach classes at the high school level so that um, the experience that students hear from um, is more relevant to what's actually happening in the workplace. Uh, so these are just some of the ways that we hope to uh, expand career readiness. I'd also point out that when we think about career readiness, a lot of times our students uh, are not exposed to what's happening in the business world. So um, doing things like mock interviews, creating resumes, um, um, having to um, abide by a certain business protocol with shaking hands, looking at people in the eye. Those are all elements of becoming more career ready, and I think our internships and our partnerships moving forward will expose students to that new reality. Sounds good. We heard Jack's Chamber President and CEO Daniel Davis talk about the impact of students on the economy. What do you think is the greatest challenge students face in competing in a global economy? Well, I think that there are several. Um, one, it, I think all of our kids in Duval County are different. I think some are growing up in homes where their parents um, are in the business world, are, have white collar jobs, and they see the realities of having a high level job on a day to day basis. Whereas other kids um, grow up in more working class backgrounds like I did, 
um, where they're not necessarily seeing someone going to work every day with a suit and a tie and, and deal with the managerial issues. So I think one challenge that we have is exposure. All, more of our students have to be exposed to the reality of going um, to work um, in a managerial role. Um, I think technology is an area where we continue to try to expose our students more to because that's where the jobs are of the future. Um, but um, even the critical thinking skills and the problem solving skills, um, one thing that we've emphasized a lot through FCAT is basic skills. But what I'm encouraged about the Common Core is that we will shift from thinking more about basic skills to critical thinking. And I think by doing that, more of our students in, in, in Duval will be ready for an international uh, type of economy. Okay. Thanks once again for joining us, Dr. Peter. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thanks, Jacob. For our final story, we're introducing you to a student known to many as Bulldog. But don't let the tough name fool you. Those who know him say he has a big heart and is a true inspiration. I've been in a wheelchair since the age of three. I had a lot of people tell me I can't do stuff. That is not true. Meet Darren Gillis, a student at Ed White High School. Gillis has cerebral palsy, but he hasn't let it stop him from earning good grades, maintaining great attendance, and most importantly, having a good attitude. This is video of Gillis giving a message to Bridge to Success students at an awards ceremony. That's where we learned his nickname from, his die-hard love of the Georgia Bulldogs. In recognition of his great attitude, special visitor and University of Georgia alum, Dr. James Young surprised Gillis. Gillis not only got some great freebies like shirts, jackets, and toys, he also got a huge surprise that nearly left him speechless. The big gift I have for you is on January 1st, you will attend the Georgia Bulldog versus Nebraska Gator Bowl game here in Jacksonville, Florida. <laughs> You. Man, I think if I can get out of the chair, I will walk right <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wasn't expecting the tickets, that for sure. Honestly, I don't feel like I'm anybody special. I'm just out here doing what I got to do. What an inspiring story. Those tickets were made possible by the local Georgia Bulldog Club. Darren says he's looking to go to UNF to pursue his dream career in sports broadcasting. His advice to other students, never give up and don't listen to the haters. That's great advice. Well, that's it for this episode of Real School. We appreciate you for watching. We'll see you again next month when our newest episode premieres March 2nd at 10 a.m. on WJCT. Be sure to tune in. Have a great day. <laughs> the cutest laugh I've ever heard. Wow, what a showcase. Remember, this happens every year. So if you weren't here, ooh, ooh, ooh. We're sitting down with superintendent. Superintendent. Okay. Superintendent. I, I, I just, my, my mind. <laughs> I know, I forget to blink. I'm like I know, a zombie. I know, I know. That's fine. <laughs> We share that each graduate's pride as they wear their cap and gown. Walk a Hey guys! <laughs>